so you missed the green. No big deal, it happens a lot, it happens to all of us, even the guys who play for a living. The key thing is, now that you missed the green, you want to get up and down to save par. And most of us struggle a whole lot with this. We don't know what club to hit, how high, how low to hit it, what, you know, we don't know what to do or how far to carry it, how far to let it roll out. Should we take our highest lofted club and try to flop shot it or scull it over the green? You, you all know what we mean. Last video, I talked about putting to break 85 and a big part of that, or to break 90 or to break 80, whatever score. A big part of that is getting up and down when you miss the green, at least getting close enough to make it in two putts and five or six times around to get up and down and save par. Or if you really miss the green badly and you miss it more than once, you're getting up and down to save bogey. You get the idea. Let's talk about that. Here I've missed the green and I'm a little ways from it and if you can tell you want to pan out to that Mr. Cameraman, it's a little bit downhill and a pretty hard right to left slope. So now the question is what do I do and a lot of us take three or sometimes even four strokes from here. This will help you get up and down and answer those questions on how far do I hit it, what club do I use and all of that. So. One of the best short game players ever, a guy named Paul Runyon, came up with what he calls the rule of 12. We're not gonna use the rule of 12 because it's kind of complicated, and I've modified it to give you a cheat code for putting, kind of a magic number for using the rule of 12. And here's why the rule of 12 is complicated. Paul Runyon says, well, you take and you step off the distance from the hole to your ball, and then you step back towards the hole the number, to the spot that you want to land the ball, and you count that number of steps, and then you get the ratio between those two steps, and you subtract from 12, and that's the club. So if your ratio was two, you start with 12, 11 would be like a sand wedge, 10 would be a pitching wedge, um, you know, so two, three, if it was a subtract three, you'd use an iron iron. A couple of problems with that. One of them is math is not a great subject anymore in schools, at least in the United States. We kind of struggle with that. People have a hard time figuring ratios, especially on the golf course without a calculator in their hand. And then two, we all ride in golf carts. So I don't have my whole bag here and I can't go, oh, I need to hit that. I've got to have this club. So what I've done is I've taken the rule of 12 and done most of the math in advance and come up with a magic number. So now I pull up to the green in my cart and I go, yeah, I got a lot of room to roll that and I don't have to carry it very far. I'm going to take a pitching wedge and an eight iron. Okay, so now here's how this works. I've given each of my clubs a magic number. So Sand wedge, magic number is two. That's my 54 degree or 56 degree. We don't use the lob wedge, or not the lob wedge. We don't use the gap wedge in this situation because for me, it's the same loft as my pitching wedge. So pitching wedge is three, magic number is three. Nine iron is four. Eight iron is five. Seven iron is six. Six iron is seven. And you can label your clip, you can remember that, just remember, all right, sand wedge is two, or the, you know, the 54, 56 is two, and I go up one from there every time. Or you can do what I've done, is I've kind of written a little bit of mag magic number on there, like there's my pitching wedge, and I've written three on it, so that I remember. So I think this is probably a pitching wedge or an eight iron, one or the other, and I measured it. And by the way, to save time, notice I parked the cart. I walk from the flag to my ball, it's 32 steps. So I got 32 steps. Now I divide by my magic number. Let's say I think I wanna use a pitching wedge. I'm really comfortable pitching with that. Well, my magic number for pitching wedge is three. So 32 divided by three, well, let's see. 
10 would get me 30, but that would be short of the hole, so that's not far enough. 11 would get me 33. You know, one step long or past the hole is probably not too bad. So three times 11 gets me 33 instead of the 32. Let's step that off. So I go from my ball, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And I'm right in here for distance. So now I'm gonna mark that. You can't do this on the green. I call it a cheat code, but you can't cheat. And so I said the 11 steps was right in here somewhere. Is that where I was, Mr. Cameraman? Yep. All right. And so now I got the distance, and that's what I want to do, hit it close enough that I can get up and down from here. And I'm looking at that, and I'm reading this just like you're reading a putt. It's got a little uphill, then a downhill, a hard break to the right. So even though this is my distance, that's not my line. My line is over in here. And right here, equal with my distance, there's a little white blade of grass. I think that's a pretty good read. We're going to go with that and see what happens. And by the way, on this one, another reason I chose to go a step long rather than a step short, even though it's a little bit downhill at the end, is I want to be past the hole. Two reasons. One, it's a chance to go in. Two, it leaves me an uphill putt rather than a downhill, side hill, really tough putt. You want to make more putts, you need to leave yourself easier putts to make. All right. Yeah, that one hit the spot exactly and just below the hole with the straight up the hill putt. Okay, but let's say for whatever reason, I don't want to carry that 11 steps. I'd like to carry it a little different or, you know, I brought two clubs out of the cart. We don't have time to slow the game down and run back to the cart and get something different. I also brought my eight iron. Now my magic number for eight iron is five. I got 32 steps to the hole. Well, if I divide 32 by five, let's see, five times six is 30, and five times seven is 35. So if I carry it six steps, I'm gonna be two foot short, which with this kind of slope is awful. And if I carry it seven steps, I'm gonna be too long because that's three steps past and it's going downhill at the end. You know. I'm smart enough to figure that out. I'll go six and a half steps. Let's carry it that far and see what we can get to. So my ball's here, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a good place to talk about something and a half. So I really want to just land that one barely on the green. Somewhere in this area and somewhere over here for line. Now, important thing, you always take a couple of clubs because in 90 plus percent of the cases, you want to land the ball. In fact, come up here, Mr. Cameraman, let's look at this. I don't want to land it back here short. The grass is different, it's bumpy, it's lumpy. There's all of that. I certainly don't want to land it right here on the collar because the ball will squirt sideways or along that. I want to land it in here on the most predictable service surface so here's my distance and my targets about here i've got this little black spot on the green that i can go at in fact i'm going to try to get right in here now that's really delicate with a small margin for error let's see what happens if i hit it to that spot and again same shot but with a different club less carry Sometimes this is good because I think you can hit an eight iron six steps or seven steps easier than you can hit a pitching wedge 11 steps. Closer to you, the better, as long as you're landing on the green.
Well, and I hit that long and left, and guess where it's gonna finish? You really have to practice your chipping. It's difficult, but when you practice, don't worry so much about the hole, but hitting your target, because this method will get you to the hole if you hit your target. One of the things you have to do is remember not to look up and see the ball hit your target. Keep your head on the ball. So a little bit of help on hitting the shot. And I'm not great at chipping, I'll tell you. This method helps me a lot, helps me get up and down more often, make more putts, that's awesome. But a couple of things that I found are really helpful. When I get over the chip, I know I want to be swinging down on the ball. So I put a huge amount of weight, like 80, maybe 90% of my weight on the left leg, heavy on the left. The other thing I do is stand a little bit closer to the ball. And the reason I do that is then I'm going to, I'll come this way so you can see. I'm a little closer to the ball, huge amount on the left. I actually hold my hands a little higher because I don't want to dig that into the ground. That's how we end up stubbing a lot of them or chunking a lot of them. And I also want to keep my weight forward because I don't want to skull it. I'm coming down into it, not flatlining it where it, it goes across the green and kneecaps somebody. So then let's talk about front or back of the stance and I'll move back around this way. If you want to take it a little higher, move it forward in your stance, but don't change the dynamics. If you want it to be a little lower, and by the way, these don't really affect the distance. It's just there's something in your way you need to go over. Like the green's elevated and you want to go over a hump to land softly on the green, you can take it higher. Or lower. Doesn't matter. But, ball a little look closer, hands a little higher. One last thing. Lock your trail elbow for right-handers at your right side. Lock that against your rib cage and just make a smooth little stroke. The thing is with this, if we're right-handed, we start trying to do all this. We start trying to manipulate, make the ball go we want, it creates problems. So lock in that right elbow, stand a little closer, wait forward, let's see if I can hit the target now. I'll take that. From this far with that slope, I've got maybe a four and a half or five footer straight up the hill to the hole. I'll take that every time. So try this. Work out the magic number. There's a list below in the comments section. Know what the magic number is for your club. When you roll up to the green, pick a couple of clubs that you think are close. Divide the number of steps by the magic number for the club you want to use. That tells you how many steps you need to carry it. Pick a target there, focus on that target, make a nice smooth stroke, land it on that target, trust it'll roll out the rest of the way, and you'll hold more putts because there'll be shorter putts and you'll get up and down more, and that will help you shoot the score that you wanna score. If you have a little time, go out and work on this, but you, can, you don't have to go to the golf course, you can work on it in your backyard. You're just chipping the ball to your target. Don't worry about the rollout or the whole trust. The math will, and the loft of the club will take care of that. Go to your target. Work on that. Keep getting up and down, lowering your scores, and here's to you making more putts. Mm -hmm.